Welcome back, everybody, to Toronto Today here on The Parlay. I'm your host, Luca Rosano, alongside my co-host, as always, Michael Singh. And we are back to talk about uh, the Raptors game. We're going to get into some future odds. And we're also going to talk about some Winter Olympic coverage that's ongoing right now. But we're first going to begin with the Raptors as they look to bounce back against the Timberwolves. They're actually going to be on the road tonight. And this one's interesting, Mike. So the line started favoring the Timberwolves slightly by one. But if you look right now, the Raptors are the favorites, minus one. As you look at Toronto, I know they had that terrible outing last time out. But overall, they've still been solid. Eight and two against the spread in their last 10. Five and one against the spread in their last six road games. But the Timberwolves have won their last seven home games straight up. So this should be a very good matchup. Do you think the Raptors can get it done going into the All-Star break? I do think they can get it done. Um, The big question, of course, as we talked about yesterday, is how are they going to contain Carl Anthony Towns, the the T-Wolves big man? Because they've struggled the last two outings against the Jokic, against the Valanchunas, and now they have another real test against uh carl anthony towns cat who as as we've mentioned is is one of the best big men in the league perhaps one of the most underrated players in the league in my opinion because i think this guy is a absolute do-it-all kind of superstar so it's going to be tough tonight because he does he is able to change his game around and score from a variety of different ways and then when you think about their supporting cast kind of coming into their groove like a Anthony Edwards, who's looked absolutely fantastic. D'Angelo Russell appears to be finally healthy. Uh, you have Malik Monk coming in, or not Malik Monk, uh, Malik Beasley coming in off the bench. And he's he's been playing really well too, adding a spark. Patrick Beverly, who's that team, some some bite in their front court. And then you have some depth in the in, um, in the center and in power forward positions like Nas Reed and, and Jared Vanderbilt. So that team's dangerous, um, yeah. especially when playing at home. I would probably stay away from this game as a better because the Raptors, I mean, I don't know which Raptors team is going to show up at this point. I, I know it'll be better than Monday night, but will it be enough to get again, get past a, a pretty much a red hot T-Wolves team that is soaring up the Western conference. And as you mentioned there, the T-Wolves at, at home, they've been, they've been pretty money seven. Oh, like you seven and oh, like you said, uh, in their last seven games at home, Luca, and while the Raptors have been good overall, their last two haven't been cutting it for me. So I'm probably staying away from this one. Yeah, I'm not feeling particularly good or confident going into this game. The Timberwolves are 17-10 and 10 at home, and you look at what they've been doing. They're 7-3 and three in their last 10. They've won two games in a row, and you're right. They are a dangerous team in the Western Conference. Right now, they're in 7th. They'd uh, be in a playing game against the Clippers, and they would be feeling pretty good about their playing hopes. Uh, hopefully trying to get into the actual playoff picture and actual playoff race because you look at this team like they have exceeded expectations and people were waiting for when we were going to see this version of the Timberwolves and it all starts in the middle like you said Carl Anthony Towns but and too he looks like the next big thing in the NBA he does look like a star now and he's only going to get better and they just have such great chemistry not only are they great friends and Kat and Russell but they just yeah, they have great chemistry already, and it's exciting to see. And you mentioned some of those other role players that have stepped in all season long. They got a good complementary uh, of players right now, and it's clicking in Minnesota. There is one funny stat. I mean, if you want to put any stock into this that I did find about the Timberwolves, particularly I'm playing on Wednesday. They are 1-5 and five against the spread in their last six games played on Wednesday. But, yeah, I'm not feeling confident about this one. I, I don't know if the Raptors can slow down Cat, and we've seen this theme where – the big attracts all attention and that's going to enable for a bunch of guys to have open looks. So this could be another track meet that we saw the other game. And if the Raptors can hit their shots like the other game, this could be another long night for them. One reason I guess I do like the Raptors in this one, Luca, is because the T-Wolves did play last night. And not only did they play last night, it, it was an overtime game. That against Charlotte, they did end up coming out on top. But when you have people like a D'Angelo Russell who has been injury prone in the past, even Cat hasn't been able to to stay the healthiest over his career, and he's doing a little bit better this season, but he still struggled at times with injuries. I wonder how much that sort of catches up to them uh, on the second night of a back to back. So something to keep an eye on there for sure. Uh, 
let's see who is going to be for sure available. Whenever you play back to back, the exact lineup isn't out fully until uh, probably closer to tip off. So keep an eye on, on potentially if anyone's resting tonight for the T Wolves, because that could move the line and maybe it sways you a little bit more to, to bet in the Raptors' favor. I mean, this is the last game, Luca, before the All Star game, All Star break. And I think both of these teams want to kind of enter that break on a bit of a high note. For the Raptors, it kind of comes at a, a really good time. Before, you know, two nights, two games ago, I was thinking, man, I don't want the All-Star game to come. <laughs> but based on, on the last two performances, I think uh, Raptors could use a bit of time off, reset, look at where they are at, at sort of the halfway point of the year right now, and I think be very happy about what they've put together so far. So it's a good time for the All Star break to come, and if they can get a win and go in on a high, that's even better for for this team. And this one's at this point, it's pretty much a pick 'em game, and I could see this going either way. This is a huge game for the Raptors, Mike. This is a much bigger game for the Raptors than it is for the Timberwolves. The Raptors have lost two in a row. You do not want to go into the All Star break on a three game losing streak. The next time the Raptors are playing, I believe, is Thursday. So that's a long time off as they had so much momentum in their corner and you can see how quickly it fades in the NBA. And not only that, you look at the overall playoff picture and we're going to get to their odds in just a second, but the Raptors need this one because you look over their shoulder, the Nets, they have a newfound energy now after making that trade. Kevin Durant is expected to come back anytime now. I, I would assume that he will be back shortly after the All-Star break. So you got the Nets right behind you. They're probably going to you know, be one of those teams that could surpass the Raptors. Then you look in front of you, you got the Boston Celtics who are absolutely rolling right now. They've won nine games in a row. They destroyed the 76ers. And speaking of the 76ers, they're going to get James Harden after the All-Star break. So the East is getting tough. It's getting very competitive. And my point is, if the Raptors want to avoid the play-in, they're going to have to avoid any type of rut, any type of losing streak now with the season coming to an end. Because if they don't and they do fall, then they can quickly find themselves in the play-in and, and no way to get out of it if teams like the Celtics continue to get hot, if the Nets get hot, and if the Sixers look very good with James Harden. So that's why you need to win tonight's game, have momentum in your corner, so then at least when you start the second half officially of the season after the all-star break you will have that you know that resounding win that you can hang your hat on but if you go in with a three-game losing streak it's I, I think it's going to be a very tough thing to swallow for this team with all that time off yeah that, that, that's some good points and looking at the standings here the raptors are three and a half games clear of the hornets who are in ninth there right behind the hornets are the atlanta hawks who pulled out another gutsy win last night against the cleveland cavaliers a uh, pretty impressive win, especially considering the fact they're without John Collins. So that was that was good to see. And Luca, let me ask you about these Celtics for a second, because I don't I don't know if enough people are talking about them. They've won nine games in a row. They've jumped ahead of the Raptors into sixth in the Eastern Conference standings. They're a game and a half above Toronto. Have three more wins on the year. Are you surprised by this Celtics run? I didn't think they were going to turn or, turn it around like this. I didn't. And I didn't think they were going to fall apart either and be a team like the Knicks that are on the outside with virtually no shot right now of getting in. Well, they do have a shot, but I don't like their chances at all. But when you look at the Celtics team, it's remarkable the type of turnaround they've had. You could argue this turnaround is one of the few that have been more impressive than the Raptors turnaround in the new year. The Celtics are getting it done defensively. That's what's impressed me the most about this team. They are putting on defensive clinics. What they were able to do against a Sixers team that puts up a ton of points at home, it was incredible. The Celtics have the best defense in the NBA since the start of the new year, and their stars are playing with a lot of confidence. Everybody was questioning Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown if they could coexist when they were in that slump. But now they're proving that they can lead a team to many wins. And Jalen Brown in particular, he's really stepped up his game. I know a lot of people are talking about Pascal Siakam potentially replacing, uh, uh, you know, getting one of those last replacements, uh, replacing Zach Levine for the All-Star game because Zach Levine might be out for that one. But Jalen Brown, man, he's, if you look at his numbers, he's also making a good case for himself too. He's been playing like an All-Star these last couple of weeks. Uh, this Celtics team, they made a, a couple of nice deals at the deadline. They got deeper. I really like what they're doing right now. And it pains me to say that as a Raptors fan, but they're <laughs> very well coached. 
they're getting it done. And during this win streak, they have a couple of blow wins against playoff teams. One coming last night against the Sixers. Like, I don't care if the Sixers didn't have James Harden. That's a 76ers team that overall looked very, very good this season. And they did that to them. So I would not want to meet this Celtics team in a playoff series right now. I would not want to meet this Celtics team in a play-in. Yeah. They're really doing a good job. And I, I think this isn't a fluke. I think they're hitting their stride at the perfect time. And this could set themselves set them up nicely come playoff time. Yeah, for me, the, the truth kind of falls a little bit in the middle. Uh, I don't think they're this good. But they're definitely not as bad as they were at the start of the season. I think everyone was kind of just waiting for them to kind of get their feet sorted and get back on track. And they did so in remarkable fashion here. And um, the same thing goes for me for the Atlanta Hawks. I think the Atlanta Hawks are a really talented team that I, everyone's kind of just waiting for them to sort of find their their stride once again. And I think that's that's been coming slowly over the last month and a half. And I think they'll they'll continue to progress in the second half of the season. So I think those are two teams to watch to kind of get back on track. Again, the Brooklyn Nets as well, especially with the trade that they just made. But Luca, I think we can move into our next topic because I think that kind of segues nicely into our next topic and that is of course the the raptors atlantic division odds so looking at the odds right now i know here you actually have them at plus 700 i just checked this morning i see them at plus 850 so depending where you look you can probably find them at a little bit better value they are currently two and a half games back of the philadelphia 76ers for that atlantic division boston as we mentioned has just surpassed them as well do the Raptors actually have a shot here, Luca, at winning the division? I don't think so. I, I wouldn't make that bad. I think three teams could potentially finish ahead of them. I, I just named some of the teams that could have a, a great turnaround after the All-Star break. I mean, the Nets are not going to be bad for much longer. And we start to see that with the type of game that Drummond and Seth Curry had. As soon as KD comes back with Ben Simmons, I honestly think the Nets are still the team to beat in the East. They're still my pick to get out. So I would have the Nets peg them ahead of the Raptors. Then you look at the Boston Celtics. From what I've seen so far, I would peg the Celtics right now ahead of the Raptors in terms of winning that Atlantic division. And uh, the other team, the Philadelphia 76ers. I, I do think James Harden is going to work with Joel Embiid. It could be a slow start out of the gate, which is going to drive Philly fans insane. But you look at those three teams, Mike, I do think they have a much better shot at winning the division than the Toronto Raptors. So I actually wouldn't put money on this bet. And that's just given the amount of talent in this division. It's insane. I mean, you're talking about teams that have legitimate superstars in the 76ers and the Nets and a team in the Boston Celtics that they're just playing out of their minds right now. So I don't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't feel confident putting any money on this one. So I am going to, first time in history here that this is happening, I am going to put a bet mid-show. And I'm putting a <laughs> bet on right now. The Brooklyn Nets are plus 900 to win the Atlantic Division right now. Wow. They are, they're four games back of the Philadelphia 76ers who are in the lead there. They're minus 175. The Boston Celtics are plus 270. They're in second. And then, of course, the Raptors at plus 850. And then the Nets at plus 900. I think Kevin Durant comes back after the All-Star break. You add in Ben Simmons into that mix. Who knows what happens with this, this protocol uh, with, with Kyrie Irving. But I really, really, really like that value for the Brooklyn Nets. So I'm actually going to put that bet right now, plus 900. <laughs> First time on this show, I think we're seeing I like this. It. I like it. No, those are great odds for the Nets. I mean, I, th I think it is going to be Brooklyn or the 76ers. I don't think it'll be the Celtics. Obviously, I don't think it'll be the Raptors. But yeah, getting the Nets now, that's great value. They're not going to be dead in the water for much longer. They, they're they going to turn this thing around. And you started to see a little bit of that in their last game. Granted, it was against the Kings. But once those guys are out there and KD and Ben Simmons, I really think this Nets team is going to look very good, even better than the 76ers. And I really like what they got cooking right now in Brooklyn. So yeah, I, I like that bet. I, I might join you on that one. I probably won't bet it now live on the show, but I'll, I'll look into it a little bit more after. 
Oh man, actually, depending on where you bet, you can get Brooklyn at plus eleven hundred. So I'm I'm doing it mid show. I got to put I got to put that down because I think that's that's a bet worth making, especially when you you add in Seth Curry and Andre Drummond to the mix. I mean, those guys alone without Kyrie, Ben Simmons, and uh, and Harden the other night against the Sacramento Kings, they looked re- or not Harden. Uh, uh, whom I think uh, Kevin Durant, they looked really good. Yeah. So I, I I like that bet a lot if if uh, all those guys come back after the break. So I'm I'm putting that down mid show. Historic history here made. I, I like it. No, and you look at their motivation too. They're they're in the eighth spot. They don't want to be in the play. And are you kidding me? They're gonna want to turn this thing around, move up the standings, and they can still do that because there's not a whole uh, ton of gap between them and a top seed. So they're definitely gonna want to snag one of those top seeds, knowing that they get home court advantage for a couple of these playoff series. So yeah, I like that. I think the motivation is going to be there. Their team's going to come together at the perfect time and we could see the Nets storm on in through the second half of the season into the playoffs. So I hope you win that bet, buddy. Thanks, man. The one reservation though, what if the Nets are playing chess and everyone else is playing checkers here and maybe they don't want home court advantage because we know that Kyrie Irving as it stands can't play at home in Brooklyn. So maybe they're just trying to tank for the eighth seed, play most of their games away from home, and that way you get Kyrie for four out of seven games as opposed to three out of seven games. I'm just saying. Yeah, that could be a variable. I think they definitely don't want to be in the play-in, so I think they're safe to get into that top six, but you could be onto something. That is that is very true. Maybe they do play this thing the other way around, and they say, hey, we're fine starting a playoff series on the road. I mean, they're all veterans. They've been there before, so yeah, that would not phase them at all. That's a uh, well. We'll see how this plays out, but again, I think that's that's a bet you just can't not take. All right. Speaking of bets and future bets, let's get into some Toronto FC talk right now. They're taking on the uh, Houston Dynamo in club friendlies, and uh, they're actually going to start their season on Feb 26th against Dallas FC. Before we get to their MLS Cup odds, which will obviously vary across a couple of places, you can find bets like this. What have your thoughts been of TFC's preseason so far? Yeah, we've we've only managed to see one game out of their their three so far. Uh, they're two and one, or th- may, there might have been three and one, or actually at this point. But it, like I said, there's only been one that's been open doors and streamed. The one today will be streamed at one p.m., so you can catch that on the TFC social channels. So far, I've liked what I've seen. Um, this is the team that looks a lot more in sync. Than they did last year, you know, when they had Chris Armis and uh, and Javier Perez as their coaches. Um, this this looks like a Bob Bradley side, and this is what the team needed to do. They needed to hit the reset button and get some structure back into the way that they play. And they look like they're in, they're in unison a lot. I think on paper they're not as talented as they were last season yet, um, pending a couple moves that are going to be trickling down in the summer. But they just still looked a lot better than they did. And you add in someone like a Jesus Jimenez up top, who is their new number nine, their new striker. And this team looks like it is a lot more capable than it was last season. So, um, so far, there's a lot to like. I know there's going to be an injection of youth on this side, which is uh, refreshing because this team has talked about uh, its academy a lot and the potential that this academy has. And we're going to start to see that showcased heading into the at least the first part of this year so i think it's, it's exciting um it's a it's been a long sort of off season with a lot of moves and i think the anticipation has been building up to see what this team is all about and we're about 10 days away from from the start of the season so seeing what you've seen and being pretty optimistic about this team when you look at tfc plus 1400 to win the mls cup which i think is what the seventh or eighth best odds right now are you taking that or are you pumping the brakes and just avoiding that bet altogether? I personally, I think it's worth the risk. Um, at what, what plus 1400? I think it is worth the risk just uh, based on some of the rumblings out there of, of some more moves they're going to make this summer. I think this team come halfway through the year, not even, is going to look a lot different than it does right now. And if they can get a good foundation going uh, before july 1st when insigne is officially set to to join this club and and play games for this club then i think uh 
I think it's exciting, and I think this team can surprise a few people and make a deep playoff run. I know that's what they're gearing for. So I wouldn't hesitate to actually place that bet right now. I think you're not going to find as great value come come July as, as you will right now. So I think it's a worth, risk worth taking. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Like, you know, it's not something that you got to be crazy about and put a whole ton, but it's something that... Uh, it could happen, right? If this team gets hot, they make a couple of in-season moves. I mean, why not? So everybody's going to be obviously waiting for the the mid of the summer when Insigne joins this team officially. So that's going to be exciting in itself. So yeah, I, I would. Uh, th- that's pretty tempting just because of where they're at. I actually expected them to be slightly higher, but at those odds, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, I think this team is going to look a lot different come July. And different in a good way where they're going to be prepped and, and geared to to compete right away, especially when you add someone that is talented as Lorenzo Insigne and some other names that are potentially in the mix there to join the team this summer. So, I yeah, I, I don't hate them. <laughs> All right, so get those bets in if you are feeling lucky. Mike just made a bet live on the show, so what's stopping you, right? <laughs> Nothing. Okay, let's switch gears now. We're actually going to get into some Canadian Olympic, uh, Winter Olympic hockey uh, updates here. So the men's game actually just finished about a half hour ago. And unfortunately, they lose two to nothing to Sweden in the quarterfinals. It was a very close game. It was tight throughout and was goalless until 10 minutes into the third period before Sweden Got the go-ahead goal thanks to Lucas Walmark. And then they put uh, this thing away winning this one two to nothing which is going to set up an all european semi-final i'm talking about sweden finland the russian olympic committee and slovakia that's going to be an interesting one of course this was kind of expected as it was announced that nhl players would not be allowed to go due to covid19 concerns so are you surprised this happened or was it inevitable that we were going to see a more tight playing field with the rule of no NHLers being allowed to suit up for Team Canada? I think that that's it. Um, I mean, this is not their A team, B team, C team, D team, E team. This is probably like their F team that they're sending here to the Olympic Games. And I know other teams are missing their NHL players too, but they still have uh, their top players from their you know local leagues in Europe there. And yeah. I wasn't really surprised to see Canada bow out in the quarterfinals. I mean, Sweden's always been a team that has a lot of good Swedish players that you don't really hear about in the NHL. Same thing with, with the Russian, what are they calling it now? Russian Olympic Committee. Yeah. Um, of Finland as well. I was surprised to be, see Slovakia actually defeat the United States, but they kind of fall under that same category as Canada. And you have someone like like Josh Hosang, who is who's supposed to be your best player, and he can't even crack an NHL team at this point. You know you're gonna you're not gonna find as much success as you you did in, in past years. So overall, I don't think this tournament was that appealing to me. Um, I, I'm dying for a best on best kind of tournament, yeah. and I'm I'm not surprised that Canada was was knocked out this early into the competition. Yeah, me neither. And you hit it the nail on the head. Seeing some of the teams that are left, you can see why they got these hidden gems in these leagues that people don't even hear about until a tournament like this. And uh, yeah, it was uh, disappointing. I always look forward to the Winter Olympics for this reason only. And I got to say, man, like I've been casually watching the Winter Olympics at night, just flipping through the channel, seeing what's going on. But it just doesn't have the same feel when it's missing its prestigious event or having the prestigious talent that competes in this event. And that's really lacking from this Winter Olympics, I find. I mean, it's something we all look forward to, not only as just hockey fans, but just sports fans. When you have best on best, world's best going up against each other, I mean, it just sets up an amazing spectacle. And uh, it's unfortunate because these things only come around every so often. So the fact that we miss out on this completely, very disappointing, I got to say, but it's because of the world we live in right now, right? Crazy times. Yeah, I think that's it. Like the pandemic definitely put a, a sour taste over this whole olympic games when you think about all the storylines leading up to the tournament was about athletes being scared to kind of go through that potential protocol uh what was it rumors something like three week protocol in in china there uh, in a foreign country that they're not too familiar with and 
that, that's tough. It, it's tough on your mental health. And I got to give a lot of credit to the, some of these athletes that have prevailed and, and still battled through. You think about this morning, someone like a Charles Amelin, uh, once again, finding success for, for the men's uh, speed skating in, in, in the relay race this morning. I mean, he has now five medals over his Olympic Games. And I think he actually tied the record for most Winter Olympic medals, which is something outstanding. I think we should just quickly touch on there. And something else that's outstanding is, once again, this Canadian women's hockey team, which actually has been entertaining. They're taking on the U.S. tonight in an exciting matchup, Luca. Did you check out the odds for this one? I didn't get a chance to. What are they at right well, now? Uh, well, Canada is actually heavy favorites against the U.S. I think Canada's around pl- minus 200, depending on where you look. Um, and that kind of makes sense, Luca, because... This woman's team, they have already beaten the U.S. this tournament. Uh, They won 4-2 earlier in the tournament, the round-robin stages, and they're undefeated. Of course, the U.S. lost to Canada, so they're not undefeated. And Canada has been dominant in this competition, except for the last Olympic Games when when the U.S. got the better of Canada. Marie-Philippe Poulin is one of the best, if not the best, Canadian hockey athlete on the planet right now. That She... She just knows how to put the puck in the back of the net, and she's an elite level talent. She's been around, seems like forever now, but she's still, still kicking and still scoring at will. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see yet another golden goal from her because she's, uh, she's been doing it for for quite some time. And I think overall, when you look at this team, it's, it's there's a lot of firepower. They've actually set the the Olympic record for for goals scored. In the Olympics, I think they have 54, which is, I mean, it's, 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 it's insane, man. And, uh, in this game tonight, betting wise, I think it probably makes more sense just to throw some money on the U S just cause the, the odds aren't so great for Canada right now, but I do think Canada is going to win the game. Yeah. Perfectly sad. I agree with that statement. I think uh, it's inevitable. And yeah, you look at some of these score lines Canada has been putting up. What was it 10 3 the other game? Uh, they've just been playing at an absurdly high level, undefeated, like you mentioned. They've already beaten this American team and they're seeking to reclaim gold, uh, the gold medal, which they actually lost to the U.S. at the 2018 game. So there's going to be that redemption factor here. They don't want to lose against these guys again. So yeah, it's it's going to be, I think, a very entertaining game. And uh, if you do want to go on the notion that you do want to try to make some money, yeah, put some money on the the States. But I, I do think the, this women's team is going to come out victorious tonight. And uh, it'll be great because at the end, you want to see the best teams win it all. And this team has been playing at its best and like the best team in the world right now. So all eyes will be on that game. I'll be watching that game. And uh, yeah, hopefully they can uh, pull through for uh, Canada, bring home the uh, the gold. Yeah, let me let me ask you something. And this has kind of been talked about quite a bit on Twitter. Um, the storyline of the narrative that a women's hockey, the Olympic of women's hockey doesn't belong at the Olympics because every year, the argument is every year we know what the end result will be. It's going to be Canada against the United States, which of course has, has held true for... You know, as as long as I can kind of think back to. So, can I get your thoughts on that? Do you think this game has has a place at the Olympics? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think those remarks are very uh, discrediting to a lot of the young women out there with high hopes to one day play in the Olympics. I understand it's been dominated by the teams that you expect to see at the end there, but to remove this entirely would just diminish what women's sports has done and the jumps and leaps it's made over the past couple of years. I mean, we've, we we want to get to that point where these women leagues, women's sports are looked at the same as men's sports. So to do something like that, I feel like you would just be going backwards and you would erase a lot of good things that have bridged that gap. So I think that would be a dumb move. And I think you, you, you continue having you know the uh, the um, women's sporting events everywhere not only the olympics but uh you know when you talk about even here in canada can toronto get a wmba team i, I think that ha- that's inevitable that has to happen I-, I think the growth should not be hindered or limited in any way especially if you're trying to promote equality across all sports 
Yeah, I think that's that's perfectly well said. I mean, the, the amount that this game has grown over the last 20 years is it, it's noteworthy. And I think, you know, teams haven't quite caught up, but they're definitely making ground as, of course, when, like other countries, Canada is going to continue to evolve and continue to adapt to what makes them better and same with the United States. But that doesn't mean that the game isn't growing globally and there's no better way to do that than showcasing them at the Olympics. So I think that was perfectly well said, Luca. And I think those takes are honestly just idiotic. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not going to mention names, but I did see uh, an article like that. I was just shaking my head. Like, we're really at this point in 2022 still questioning these things. It, it just doesn't belong. So, yeah, we are going to get into our uh, best bets now. And again, good luck to the uh, Canadian women's hockey team. Hopefully they can beat uh, the United States. If you do have money on the States, sorry I said that. But yeah, let's get into our <laughs> best bets, Mike. Um, did you win last night? I'm trying to remember. Buddy, I won. We got a nice little 94th minute goal from Kelly oh, yeah. Mbappe <laughs> to get PSG that big 1-0 victory. And I actually took Mbappe to score first in that game too, which was nice. So wow. I cashed in I cashed in quite a bit last night or yesterday betting on some some UEFA Champions League. And right now I'm 16 on 11, five games above 500 in, in general. I think that's pretty good. But then when you compare it to Luca's record, who won a <laughs> again last night 20 and 7 it doesn't look that shabby so i'm gonna actually stick with the uefa champions league today they have another set of games out of few and i like liverpool against uh inter milan tonight um they're playing in milan but on the money line liverpool is actually plus 110 i think that's that's pretty good odds considering the fact that Liverpool have actually won their last six matches. They haven't lost in their last nine games. And away from home, they haven't lost in their last four. So this is a team that's in form, hitting their stride. Jurgen Klopp is is a fantastic manager and knows how to get it done in, in these big games. Well, I think Inter Milan, are, their, their focus has been on the Serie A this season as they are competitive in that league. And I just don't know if they have the squad depth to compete in both competitions. So I'm actually going to take Liverpool on the money line today at plus 110. Yeah, I really like that. Some good value there. Um, yeah, two two more games today in Champions League. So I could do a nice little parlay if you wish. All right, I'm going to go back to what's been making me some money and <laughs> getting me all these wins, and that is the NBA. And uh, I'm actually looking at a team that Mike just put some future money on. And I see that they're actually underdogs tonight against the New York Knicks. I'm taking the Nets all day in this spot. Plus four and a half. I think Brooklyn wins this game outright. We saw they don't need KD or Simmons to win games as of now. And we saw how much of an impact a guy like Drummond and Curry can make immediately. I think this team has found a new source of energy and we saw how good they can become with those role players stepping up with their stars being out last game. So I think they're going to keep it going here. They're going up against a New York team. They're not really good right now. Been very inconsistent. And uh, they are going to be playing with a little bit of fire tonight, trying to prove that they are the best team uh, in, in New York. But Brooklyn's going to get it done. I mean, I, I just don't see the Knicks winning this game. Uh, if they do, I, I think Brooklyn will at least keep it close. So yeah, I'm going to go uh nets plus four and a half yeah that's uh i mean based on the way they played last game that's not a, a bad bet whatsoever um usually these things kind of settle back down and brooklyn was riding an 11 game losing streak and i think those like i said those sorts of things even out and do you know if Kyrie irving can play tonight in new york that is a good question i don't believe so Trying yeah, it to makes sense it. because i don't think it's just like a brooklyn yeah no, i think exactly. it's, it's a they're just no, a few miles away at msg right so it makes sense that he won't be available and i can actually confirm that just uh looking it up quickly so yeah, no Kyrie Irving once again so we'll see if they can prevail there without Kyrie once again and they did it the other night so there's no reason why they can't do it tonight Man, it's so fascinating with this Kyrie Irving thing. I think what you said earlier might have some uh, stock to it where, yeah, the Nets do want to start playoff series on the road so Irving can play. <laughs> it's crazy. What a time, man. What a time in sports where uh, we have these variables on the table. 
But that will conclude another edition of Toronto Today here on The Parlay. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. You can catch this podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can follow us all across social media. And we will be back on this very same show, talking Toronto sports and more tomorrow. On behalf of myself and Mike, have a great day. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>